All right, guys, welcome back to the show. Um, I've had many questions today on the YouTube um, studio app thingy. I've seen so many and I was trying to answer so many. I've made so many promises about making videos on so many different subjects. So forgive me, uh, sorry, forgive me, forgive me if I don't mention the subject that we spoke about. I'll get to it at some stage, guys. There's so many different questions, but I have picked on a couple. Um, I can't recall the names right now, but you know who you are. So there was a person who mentioned something about um, his portfolio being mostly in DeFi and he hasn't really seen much um, progress in DeFi. And there was another person, I do remember your name, Metamorphosis, I think it was, and then some numbers. Um, and you mentioned something about um, how many coins were there um, in the previous cycles, right? And I'm just going to go off the top of my head, right? So I'm not going to, the numbers are not going to be 100% accurate, but they're going to be close enough, right? Because... The numbers change every single day guys so whatever um data that i had then right um i'm just recalling them from memory and i hope this kind of helps right so let's carry on with this and um so let's talk about this and what i'm going to do is i'm going to talk about the DeFi section at the end and it will make total sense to you right um because what metamorphosis said is kind of connected to the DeFi part as well right um, so let's talk about this and uh, let's carry on. But before I get into this, uh, I am looking at the chart for Caspar. While the market's been a bit bloody today, and you do remember, I did talk about how um, the crypto market um, may be looking a bit bloody. BTC could even go down to around 50K. We are currently at 50,890 something dollars, just say $50,900. Um, Ethereum sitting at $2,700, um, Solana sitting at 107, say sitting at 90 cents, easy, easy, right? So the market's bloody, market's bloody, right? The good thing is, is when you look at the total market cap, we're still sitting at $1.86 trillion. So really, really nothing much. Remember what I said, most of this is just liquidations because a lot of people are trying to long the market, short the market, do whatever, right? So greed, basically greed. Greed is the reason why we're seeing red candles. But when we see red candles, we get excited because those are the times we want to enter the market. And one other thing I've noticed is Casper performs a lot better on a bloody market than on a green market. So people tend to move over to Casper all of a sudden when it's bloody. So anyway, Casper's doing fantastic. It is currently in a new price discovery mode. Um, it hit as high as 16 cents or 16.9 cents today, almost 17 cents. Very, very good. Um, I do have a target if you do want to know. Again, this is not a financial advice. Um, the target currently I see is about 22 to 23 cents for Casper. So that's a nice little significant pump there. You're looking at about 50% return. But you have to trade this with your stop losses, guys. Remember this if you do want to get into this. Now that we've got this over, let's move over to um, how many coins we had. So in the beginning, as we all know, right, um, BTC is the, the king, right? The one and only coin that was there. Um, but that's not true. Right? <laughs> that's not true, right? Before that, we had a few more currencies like e-gold, e-money, e-this, that, whatever. There were so many attempts to make something very similar. And I do have a podcast style, long form um, audio, video, whatever you want to call it, coming very soon where I kind of deep dive into the entire theory that I have. I wouldn't call it a conspiracy, but I'll call it a theory that I have on the inception of BTC. And it's not what you think it is, right? Um, it's a few dots I've connected. And I was like, wow, okay, that makes more sense to me, right? And just made me feel that BTC is more real than it is. And my, made my um, conviction and my belief much more stronger because of what I thought, right? And I'll talk about this on another video, as I said, right? So watch out for that one. That one's coming very soon. I'll probably label it the, the biggest conspiracy theory on the planet, whatever. But that's coming very soon. Anyway, so... Um, we had BTC and then after, after BTC was created, obviously, uh, many other people um, from the communities like Reddit communities, X, Y, Z, attempted to also do the same kind of thing. So even though officially we had BTC to be the first one, um, the work on that, I've mentioned this many, many times before as well on previous videos as well, old videos, by the way, guys. Uh, that BTC, the work uh, originally was mentioned on Reddit around 2008. Um, by that time, Satoshi had already been doing a lot of bunch of work on it and he already accumulated a whole bunch of coins on it it went public in 2009 um january the 3rd 2009 was when it went public um so great good luck to him or whoever they are they made it go public so that's officially the first ever cryptocurrency uh, or cryptographically secured um coin that we've had like a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, coin 
And then um, others, like I said, on Reddit and whatnot, they saw it, they tried to duplicate it, copy whatnot. So by 2013, we had officially around 66, unofficially maybe close to 100, right? attempts at making these but the 66 that we had were established so these were known coins right by 2013 um by 2015 and this is when the bull market kind of starts right we had around 600 um coins so you can see how the numbers are gradually increasing so we had like three times um sorry not three times about six times more coins than we had um previously so that happened and then 2017 like by the end of 2017 when the bull market ended um we had close to around um i think it was about one and a half to two thousand coins if i'm correct or maybe a little bit more um unofficially could be around three thousand remember there's a difference between the official numbers and unofficial numbers official numbers are what's being tracked by institutions corporations website developers and other people who track these coins including coin market cap unofficial numbers are completely different right they're far more greater because those coins are not accepted or they haven't verified or they probably just did it and then they abandoned it or whatever right so these are the reasons why we have a higher number on um uh, the unofficial list right okay so that was that we had right one and a half thousand official unofficially maybe about three thousand coins that's just on the top of my head and then come 2020 um we have another bull market again we have another hype and many many coins many many projects are already there and many are now being tracked and that time we had around six and a half to seven thousand coins being tracked so the 2020 2021 bull market we actually had about seven thousand cryptocurrency being tracked so you can see the numbers are significantly growing untracked unofficially we had thousands thousands and thousands and thousands remember what i said on the video regarding the blackrock right i said how btc was attempted uh, at that time there was a um uh, like there was a website where you could go and track these things like how many times btc has died and how many times btc has been attempted to be forked someone was tracking that right um because there's this thing that btc has died xyz amount of time because that's what the narrative was that's what the news was that's what the media said it was right and someone's been tracking how many times they've actually mentioned it and how many times they said bitcoin's a piece of shit right and obviously they've all been proven wrong um so similar way someone was tracking and we did see like there was thirty six thousand attempts i mentioned this on the video um and you can go and find the article and verify it right but that was the case um so you can see unofficially thousands of attempts are being made so a similar way when we were tracking about seven thousand coins back in 2021 i would say around a hundred thousand coins were not being tracked right a hundred thousand coins was not being tracked so anyway we fast forward to currently 2024 by now coin market cap is tracking over two million cryptocurrencies right coin paprika almost close numbers coin gecko similar numbers right so they're kind of all copying each other they're tracking these on track probably there's another million tokens that we know so far coins tokens blockchains whatever you want to call it there's about a million there you know, right i know a blockchain myself where i was kind of involved with the group themselves but it's an abandoned project um they had around six thousand members on their discord group um i was um part of the development group and the idea kind of thing so we were talking about it and i actually wanted them to um help me build um a project that i was working on a few years back unfortunately they disappeared because they um decided to do things in a more centralized way um and the blockchain was abandoned completely because they realized they can do something else but anyway that's a long story i don't want to talk about that but the point is is right now in 2024 we have tracked 2. Point, uh, something million tokens untracked i've i've mentioned this probably another million tokens right um so that kind of just speaks to you i'll give you a good example tracked in january so in january tracked we had uh, and officially launched we had 9000 projects just in january alone can you believe that we had 9000 projects launched in january 2024 guys so just make think about that that's just tracked on track god knows how many right so now a lot of people community members right and this is something i think metamorphic souls will mention as well right you have a, a a sum of funds right you know we know the global um money supply right so the global money supply or the household income whatever you have right 
it's a fixed supply. Everyone knows that. No one has extra, right? You make money, yeah, during a bull market, whatever, you make extra money. But the supply doesn't really change because it just changes hands, right? So if you have, just for the hypothetically, right, if you have, you know, $200 trillion on the planet, you have $200 trillion on the planet, you don't have a penny more, right? Because that's how many they've minted. So we, when we are like um, getting into crypto and when we um, diluting the market, right, when we have so many different coins, millions and millions of coin, right? And people are aping into these, like a lot of DGENs are aping into these coins because they're fresh, they're brand new, right? And I understand, right? I, I'm a DGEN myself sometimes, not all the time, right? Um, I don't like to be a DGEN most of the time. I, and I, whenever I do it, I do it in a strategical way because I, I only invest money I could afford to lose, right? I have um, done, like, for example, I've done $10 trades, right, on, on coins, and that $10 turned into, like, $50, and I thought, oh, okay, I'm out. But I didn't have that thing where, like, hindsight comes in, oh, shit, I should have put five grand in there because I could have five x that. No, I wouldn't do that because they're new, they come, they make a bit of money, they'll hype the shit out of it, and then they'll, they'll exit, right? However, um, and that happens a lot, and you get rugged. Now, um, there are projects which um, are still there. The founders haven't pulled the money and liquidity is still there. And of course, they had a high and then they dumped all the way down. So they had a curve going up and then literally to the floor. But the project's still there. That's when I think of those projects. I'm like, OK, there may be a potential to get into this project again. Right. So I'll go and deploy another ten dollars if I have to. Right. You never know. It could be a Shiba. It could be a Bork, whatever, or a Bonk, whatever you want to call it. Right. So the point is, is. I do go and um, deploy cash, but only money I could afford to lose. As I said, I would go even as little as $10. I don't care. I'm not here trying to promote big million dollar projects. No, none of that business, right? I have those. Those are different story. Those are life changing stuff, right? Um, we don't come and talk about them on YouTube and hype them and shit like that, right? Sorry, excuse my language, but that's the truth. So um, what was I saying? So um, that's the scenario we have right so there's so much diversification in the market and people are aping into stuff and people are losing a lot of money and all it's doing is just changing hands right so there's not enough money here um for everyone to think that oh this this is going to be the thing yes um a lot of people have talked about in fact there was a few comments regarding institutional money coming in and i said to someone i, I replied back to them i said guys uh, or whoever the person was i said um I, I'm a realist, right? And that's the truth. I am a realist. If you look at all my videos, you'll probably notice I am genuinely a realist, right? I think about the market now. When I make calls on what the market would be, it's a probability, right? It's a probability. It's not a fact, right? Any theories, anything we have, it's only a probability. It's not a fact, right? So we base things on the fact. So one of the fact is when I said, like, for example, it's not 200 million, but uh, sorry, 200 trillion, just hypothetically, right? If that's a fixed money supply, then we know, and if we know what the emission is, means the the uh, the like um, how much how many more um, percent of uh, um, money is coming to the supply. So some countries have eight percent more coming every year. Some uh, people have four percent more. This is how you see that money inflation system, right? So that, that, that's just um, money if um, emission, right? How much more is coming into the market? So when we know all of these things, we can roughly have an idea and say, well, that's the money supply. That doesn't change. Right. But instead of focusing all our energy onto the big blue chips or the good projects out there, the established projects that, you know, I, I call them bulletproof. Right. Um, people are now trying to degen into the smaller ones, really, really small caps with the hopes of making a lot more. And I understand them, completely understand them. You know, and I sympathize with a lot of people because a lot of people see one person making one hundred dollars into a billion dollars or one hundred dollars into a million dollars. And they want to do the same as well. Right. But what they don't realize, um, currently you have a million options. That means you're one in a million that's gonna that this is gonna happen to. So the other ninety nine percent or ninety nine point nine percent has to lose, right? So people don't see that. So that's the situation we've got. So I hope your answer, your question is answered. You, the, how many coins we have and what the differences are. You can see we started off with one, um, which became like around hundred, and then from a hundred it was like a. a a couple of thousand from a couple of thousands to a couple of hundred thousand and now we're sitting at a couple of million right if not three probably even four million close to four million so it is getting really really uh, crazy out there it's getting crowded but the money supply hasn't changed we don't have any more money than we started with if that makes sense right people's households income hasn't changed any more than it was in fact more people have probably lost money and handed it over to somebody else and made one person more wealthy than others. I've talked about this as well. 
um, that there are these groups of people in Telegram groups or whatever where they collaboratively go and only trade a single coin and they pump and dump that coin and they all make money from that, right? That's been happening as well. And of course, many of the people who follow these groups end up being losers as well most of the time because one hand takes the other hand loses, right? It always happens. So coming into DeFi, I want to talk about DeFi. Um, I forgot, I think the brother's name was Ali something. I can't remember. Just rings a bell. But um, DeFi, now DeFi is, is a brilliant narrative, right? A lot of people need to understand the context of DeFi. Now, I could be totally wrong. You might have a complete different meaning, understanding of this. And I know a lot of people have come onto previous videos and commented on certain things. For example, when we did the one about the fork, a lot of people came up to me uh, like we're talking about forks um in the comment i don't know who they were re referring to but um they were talking to uh saying like oh a, a, a lot a fork is not what you call copycat or whatever no a fork is a code guys if you go github and you fork something it's a fork full stop there's no ifs and buts about it you can now launch the same thing which we did and we we realize how it works or you can modify it and now own it do whatever you want in fact, majority of the successful websites, softwares, and applications out there are forks or forks, right? So let's just not go down that route, right? So with DeFi um, and blockchains, right, you know, like EVM chains, they're all copycats, they're all forks of the original Ethereum. So let's just keep that real as well. Um, let's talk about this, right? So DeFi... DeFi is a very lucrative thing. So obviously, as I said, it depends on your understanding of what DeFi is and how you go into it. Now... Decentralized finance for me is like, for example, farming, right? Um, I have farmed on a few blockchains, right? And what I mean by that is I've just moved my Ethereum through them, through the bridges. And I've just moved it from one blockchain to another, one blockchain, obviously money I could afford to lose and not a large significant amount. Some people degen into it. I've, I've known people to put hundreds of Ethereums into it. I'm like, dude, do you realize that blockchain could rug pull you? could not be it might not be even a real project right you don't want to get stuck into it right wherever you go in make sure that you see the exit first right so you're entering a building right you don't know what what, what what's what's inside there right but all you're planning to do is eg uh, enter and exit then you should also find the exit first right so make sure there's an exit first if you if there's none don't get in right so that's what i do i normally just enter blockchains and exit blockchains the new ones right uh, and then in the future, if they do an airdrop, then I've just got lucky because I use their blockchain. I've got an airdrop, right? So that's kind of what I farm on those things. Um, there are um, like projects where they want you to lock funds. I don't like those. Um, I think it's a bit risky. I don't want to lock my Ethereum anywhere. If I am going to lock my Ethereum somewhere or anything to do with EVM, right, or any cryptocurrency, I would rather go and stake it. It's stable, it's less, yes, but it's stable, right? It's less risk in my opinion, right? Even though they could also rug, right? So I'm quite careful about where I put my funds in. Now, the one funds that I do like to, um, to mess around with DeFi. So for me, the biggest DeFi interaction that I have is what happens is any time that I'm, I'm making money or any time I'm making profits, right? I'll take a certain amount of the profit and I'll, I'll lock it into USD or USDC or USDT or whatever, right? And I'll plug it into like a stable um, yield return, right? You know, depending whether it's Aave, Curve Finance, whatever. Somewhere it's, you know, basic, just leave it there. Even on a simple exchange, right? I'll leave it there. Talking about exchange, actually, there was one other person, Maxim G, he mentioned something about trading platforms. I am going to mention this because it just reminded me. I am going to mention this as well. So um i will just go and drop on an exchange or something and earn two three four percent i'm happy the lower the better because i know it's a lot more stable it's a lot more safer i don't want to see a terra luna situation right where my usdt is supposed to be pegged to one dollar is now a couple of cents right i don't want to go there do you know what i mean so i'm i'm playing the safest method why because what i'm trying to do is save those so when a bear market comes in or when an opportunity a dip or whatever comes in i have funds sitting there earning me yield you know, which i can now plug back in it's no point in me bringing it back to fear right or anything like this i don't go and go in and out of the market all the time guys so i always keep my bank balances empty. i don't care i only need enough money to pay my bills that's that's all i need in there right 
most of the assets that I have are just sitting in the crypto sphere, right? And that's where I'll kind of um, move around, move the funds around and farm and do whatever. So that's kind of how I played the, the uh, DeFi, mostly is to do with the yield strategy because all I'm looking for is yield and I want to farm as much. Of course, when I'm farming, by the way, a lot of people don't understand this, right? When you're farming, it's not cheap, right? Gas fees could uh, rake up, but that's a loss I'm willing to take. You know, if I'm sending 10 Ethereum, for example, and it's going to cost me $50 just to get in and out, it's a, it's a loss I'm willing to accept because I might be um, getting some rewards, some airdrops, whatever, which could eventually be worth more than what I spent. And even if it's not, as long as I break even, it's okay. I don't care because in the future, they might do something. It's free, right? So I know a lot of you guys like previously know that when it came to Polkadot, the original parachains, Polkadot parachains, I did go big on it. And I still hold a coins from there, um, which are worth a, lo a lot of money, right? Which I've received for free. I received for free because all I did was I participated in the Polkadot parachains, locked it down. I don't care however long it is. Once the parachain was over, I got my refund back. I got my dots back, right? And I also got the currency that I farmed by just locking my coins. You know, so for me, it was a win-win, right? Some people said to me, you could have made a lot more by just locking your dot. You know, some people were paying 50, 60, uh, sorry, um, 15, 16% yield per year. Compared to that, you actually made less. True right but as i said i would rather go for a one percent yield than a 15 percent yield because i want to go for what's safe and sustainable not for not what's risky and high yield and high returns no that's just me gambling guys i don't want to do that so i hope that kind of makes sense right and now um maxim talked about like trading maxim we don't trade on trading view trading view is a charting tool right um of course you can connect it to uh brokers and trade that's your traditional market so if you are doing fx um stocks bonds and whatnot yes you can connect your trading platform directly to trading view provided they are using trading view um you can connect it and you can trade directly from there right on the chart literally you can buy and sell um but most of us people in crypto we don't use trading view to chart Trading view we use for navigation, right? <laughs> Literally for navigation. When you want to go into the market, you want to find the trends, you want to zoom into a map, you want to zoom out of a map, depending on, um, like, for example, I'm a premium account holder. Um, so I can zoom into like seconds. So I'm looking at candles at a second if I have to. Sometimes I'm sitting there and I only have an hour to trade, right? And I can't trade a four hour candle on an hourly uh, time frame. Neither can I uh, trade an hourly, right? Because I'm inside the hour. So sometimes I'll have to zoom in. I'll go to a 30 minutes, 15 minutes, 10 minutes, five minutes, even a minute if I have to, to make that one single trade. Because all I'm looking for that one opportunity where I can make that money and then get out as soon as possible. Because I cannot be in a trade longer than I have, right? You know what I mean? So a trading tool, um, and I laughed about it because you said what kind of platforms. Trading, uh, trading view is what we use uh, for charting nothing more um in fact i i used to use a lot of indicators now i don't i just use a few basic ones yes i have about 21 22 or maybe 23 indicators um sitting on my chart but all of them are switched off there's only one or two that i use the most powerful and uh um, indicator that i found and the most basic is stochastic rsi and rsi um it has guided me um, accurately through the markets a lot so that's something that i do um like so that's what it is now when we come to crypto trading there are multiple ways right you can do the de uh, decentralized way of trading for example we do have duidx which is a very good exchange you can use gmx which is a very good exchange you can use you can also go in and do like limit orders and whatnot in fact i think um uniswap um on um ethereum um or probably a few blockchains as well i think there's a few blockchains you can actually um if it's not available already, I think on the next V4, you will be able to do limit orders, right? So they are launching a V4 very soon. Um, you should be able to do um, limit orders there. And similar, there's other exchanges there where you can do limit orders and buys and sells. There are um, like obviously top tier exchanges. Now, I would not normally recommend stick to the top tier exchanges. Even if they're centralized, it doesn't matter. You're going to find it a lot more easier and it's going to be a lot more cheaper, right? So in order to save funds and whatnot, yes, it's going to be a lot more cheaper. Um, so what I do is normally if I'm trading, then I will focus on like Coinbase, um, Binance, KuCoin, Bybit I used to, Bybit is now a bit of a pain, uh, MEXC, right? So those are the ones I'll be looking at.
Some people like BitKit. I don't like BitKit. I don't know why I don't like it. I do like Bing X. So that's that. Um, and while I'm on the subject of exchanges, I might as well drop this to you as well. I am currently in the process of launching my own exchange, um, but that's to be announced. Nothing yet. So that's something I've been working on for some time now. I've been talking about it with the community and it's something I'm going to be launching in the future. So there's going to be an exchange coming, but my one's going to be slightly different. Uh, I want to keep it as decentralized as possible. So that's a different story with the lowest amount of fees. Um, so that's that. Um, and yeah, that's where we would go and trade, right? And when you're trading, there are things to look at. For example, on some exchanges, you will find they do allow you to do stop losses, but they don't allow you to do trailing stops. So that will also defer as well, right? So when you choose an exchange that you want to go and do your major trades, right? Um, you will f find the one that suits you the best, right? What is it that you're comfortable in doing, right? Do you just want to go and do spot buys? Fine, there's an exchange for that. Do you want to go and do leverage trading? Well, yes, there's an exchange for that, right? Or some exchanges will have all of those functions built into them. Um, but just because they have all of those, do they have the volume is another thing you need to look at. Also, there may be new fresh coins that you're looking at or new projects that have just come out. Um, you want to get into those. Again, look at those as well. Which exchanges have those DGEN coins that you want to get into? high risk but what do you want to get into right so you've got to look for all of those things and like we always say um having one exchange is not the right thing in crypto we normally prefer as many as possible right wallets exchanges ideal pads launch pads whatever as many as possible um i mean a few years back i had um, close to around 400 accounts in 400 different platforms i did reduce it down currently i have i think about 60 or 70 but I reduced it down because of the UK um, regulations, right, where they did the, what's it called, the travel ban or whatever they call it. And a lot of exchanges um, started geo-blocking us. Hence why I wanted to create my own thing, because I was like, I'm fed up, I can't do this, right? There are some great exchanges, great protocols out there, including Bybit and XYZ, which I have used and made a lot of money. But now I'm geo-blocked just because I'm in the UK. They're like, nope, you can't trade with us anymore. Get out of here. I just didn't understand. I was like, what's wrong with you people? Right? So I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, I hope the video was informative enough. Um, guys, again, remember, if you have watched this video to the end, um, in the comments, right, if you are going to say something, guys, um, understand this. I'm not sitting here with this script, right? Neither am I sitting with my research notes or anything like that. Nothing like that, right? I'm literally just sitting here offloading my mind, um, what I've learned, um, the experiences that I have and the knowledge, limited knowledge that I have, right? I don't want to call myself an expert. I'm not an expert, right? Yes, I make crypto calls. Um, but again, I don't make calls so that, oh, I want to tell you um, what's already happened or something. No, I tell you what's about to happen. Now, if it, that is not evidence enough that I don't have anything pre-prepared, I don't know what is, guys, right? Remember, information that I give you, that candle doesn't exist. That candle doesn't exist, right? When I tell you the market's going to go to that price two days ago, right? When I say, look, guys, we're about to get to 50K. All right, as long as we get to 50K, we're fine, right? I said that two days ago. Do you know what I mean? And that time, those the last two days, candles didn't exist. So I don't really know what else to say, but I'm not here to prove myself or anything like this. And I'm not here to defend myself or anything like this. I will happily talk about whatever experiences and knowledges that I have. And I hope it helps one person. That's about it. But all I would appreciate is if you can't say anything nice, don't say anything at all. Right. Um, because me coming here is a whole different thing right um a lot of the youtubers that come to youtube on a specific time on a specific date you know scheduled why do you think they do that right they do that because they want to make something out of you that's their uh, job that's what they do this is not my job i only do this um for moral reasons right i feel happy um you know i want to make a video i want to help someone i think the person genuinely needs help hence why i'll come and try and answer those questions like right now in this video i tried to answer three people's questions at the same time uh, while i remember so um yeah that's what i do guys you know i'm just a real guy real person doing my own thing i'm trying to help at least one person right if one person understands what i'm talking about here um that's enough you know what I mean? So other than that, I'm not going to say anything else. Please do like, share and subscribe. And when I do get time, as I said, when I do get a few hours to myself, like two, three hours, I will do this deep dive on uh, BTC and theory that I have and it will change your minds and it will 
it, it will make you respect crypto a little bit more, um, especially BTC. And you'll understand what I'm about as well, because regardless whether I talk about what I'm doing, the projects I'm working on or the ventures I've been involved in, right? Um, you will see that knowing or, or understanding what I understood from this theory that I have has eventually made me who I am today. That's all I'm going to say, right? Um, so other than that, like, share, subscribe, and I'll catch you on another one very soon. Adios, my amigos.